Wow, is this... Is this YouTube? Is this why it's like to make a video? I, I completely forgot what that's like. Uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, folks. It's been... Well, it hasn't necessarily been that long. It's been like a month. I've been... I've been away from YouTube for longer than that, but... Uh, hopefully at least some of you remember me. Uh... Yeah, I've had quite a bit of school work. And, uh... Actually, I had spring break about a week uh, ago. And I was gonna make vid a couple videos during that, but I just was too busy... Uh, being in a coma the entire time. Uh, what else? Yeah, and because of schoolwork, I might not be able to make videos where I'm, like, really thinking about something. At least not very often. I, saying that, I do have a couple such videos planned, but whether or not I'll have time to do them in the near future, um, I mean, hopefully I'll be able to do them sooner rather than later. Uh, also, a new pair of glasses. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I figured that since both Agent of Doubt and Invincible Numinous have at this point given me shoutouts, uh, I might as well uh, show people who went and subscribed from those shoutouts uh, that I, uh, exist. Uh, so what am I going to talk about today? Well, a few weeks ago, there was a small, a couple of users, uh, one of them going by the name of Socialist Sleepover, and the other one going by the name of, I think, Desecrate Conformity, something like that. And they posted videos talking about agorism and the notion of counter-economics. And both of them seem to agree that um, counter-economics was uh, putting the cart before the horse in the sense that we need to create the institutional framework to be able to support something like a counter-business uh, before actually creating counter-businesses because you know, counter businesses uh, tend to fail, and those that don't tend to either not be very, not be working very often, or uh, they tend to become not so counter businessy. So, uh, I guess I agree in the sense that counter businesses need a certain institutional framework. To, uh, in order for us to be able to do that, but uh, I think these people are misunderstanding what agorism and counter-economics are, and to be fair, that's partly the fault of most agorists themselves, because, well, uh, I'll just go right into defining what counter-economics is. Samuel Konkin III. Uh, I think that's how you say it, the founder of agorism, basically, define counter-economics as all peaceful human interaction that is currently prohibited by the state. Uh, so, black markets and gray markets tend to be what agorists themselves emphasize. Uh, and most agorists seem to think that counter-economics means counter-business, or economics in the sense of, you know, people trading and money and all that stuff, but it's, that's not inherently how it is. And even and Brad Spangler, who is an agorist, defines counter-economics in the same way as all peaceful human interaction forbidden by the state. So, I'm not disputing that counter-businesses need an institutional framework for uh, we try to build them, but the counter in building of counter institutional framework itself would need to would fall under counter economics, and Samuel Konkin would not disagree necessarily with building these institutions. 
like I said, ag most agorists themselves seem to get confused about this. They tend to emphasize black and gray markets much more than anything else. But, you know, it's not inherent in counter-economics or, or agorism. Uh, as for all uh, other sorts of agorism stuff, you know, I don't know if I would be technically an agorist. I wouldn't mind being called that, certainly. Uh, and, you know, there are certainly uh, interesting things uh, that have been, at least that I think, have been inspired by agorism. Like, bitcoins, I think, were agorist inspired. Um, if not bitcoins, definitely a black market called Silk Road. And I will put a link to a Wired magazine article in the down below bar uh, where they say it was inspired by agorism. But, and I do think that Silk Road is kind of overhyped. So is Bitcoin. Uh, yes, they are uh, fairly well protected, but uh, I mean, a person who knows what he's doing could achieve a similar level of uh, of being anonymous without needing to use the measures implemented by Silk Road and Bitcoin. Uh, and I haven't gotten around to actually using Silk Road for anything yet. And it's not just drugs on Silk Road. That's another misconception about Silk Road. Uh, they also have, well, like, they have lab equipment. I've uh, been there, and they have lab equipment, which is awesome. I'm definitely going to need to get some from there. But, um, yeah, Silk Road is kind of overhyped. Bitcoin there are, is also overhyped, but there are some misconceptions about that, too. Like, there is, like, it is always the case that the price is wide, wildly fluctuating. And while that certainly is the case a fair amount of the time, it certainly hasn't been the case recently. I've been watching at, like, Mount Goss and uh, other places, and the Bitcoin exchange rate really hasn't been fluctuating that much uh, as of when this video is being posted. So, yeah, a bit of a rambly video here, but uh, it does take you through my thought process, and Again, I don't have a lot of time to make much more stuff. So, uh, yeah. Take care, everybody.